in Mobile Bay during unexpected times of the year, the phone will ring. And when you pick it up, the only thing that the other person on the other end of the line will say is, it's the Jubilee. Not growing up in Alabama, I had no idea about any of this. Sounds like a wonderful bedtime story where you're not sure if it is true or not. But when someone on the other end of the line says, it's the Jubilee, everyone drops the phone and rushes to the shoreline. I've only seen pictures of it only heard stories about it. And I'm sure none of those capture the reality where along the shoreline for miles, there are thousands of fish that seem to be trying to escape the ocean. That people rush to gig flounder and catch crab because of all of these fish who seem to want to be caught. That tourists go to see it, to post a picture of it, to tell their friends about it. But most people go for the abundant catch. It is a celebration, a windfall of grace. But as Rick Bragg writes, late sleepers never get to witness a jubilee. Jubilee, of course, comes from the Bible, from the pages of Leviticus, which is not the book you think of when you think of celebration. But it's a celebration of grace where every 50 years, the seventh of the seventh Sabbath year, all debts are to be forgiven, all slaves are are to be made free, and all land is to be returned to its original owner. Now, we don't have any evidence that the Jubilee was ever practiced in reality. But it stays there as a reminder, as an assurance of God's hope that God's grace and forgiveness is always at work. But like the Jubilee in Mobile Bay, we have to open our eyes to catch a glimpse of it. There are two stories in the Gospel of Mark where someone who is blind is healed. The first one is in Mark chapter 8, takes place in Bethsaida. The second one is here in Mark 10, which we read this morning, about Bartimaeus. And in between those two stories, separated by just a couple chapters, they serve as bookends. Jesus, in between those two moments, is talking about the suffering that is yet to come. He keeps mentioning that the Son of Man will face betrayal. He's talking about humility faithfulness, and service as a way of life. And these two stories that serve as bookends invite us to look again and to see anew God's grace and forgiveness that is at work. This is also illuminated on two different occasions, when Jesus asked the same question. The first time, a couple disciples approach him wanting a favor. And Jesus asked the first time, what is it that you want me to do for you? And they say, oh, we want to sit on either side of you in all your glory. And their request is misguided. They have not fully seen or understood what it is that Jesus has been talking about 
referring to humility, faithfulness, and service. The second time is Bartimaeus. He cries out from the side of the road. And Jesus asked, what is it that you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus says, son of David, have mercy on me. Let me see. Two different occasions. The exact same question, two very different requests. Let me stand on either side of you in your glory. And son of David, have mercy on me. That Bartimaeus models for us a posture of grace and forgiveness. And when Bartimaeus cries out from the side of the road, the disciples sternly tell him to be quiet, that they obviously don't see what Jesus sees. Because Jesus calls out to Bartimaeus, let him come to me, that Jesus truly sees Bartimaeus even though he has no status or prominence, and even though Bartimaeus is blind, he sees Jesus in a way that the others do not. He calls out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David is the title for the coming of the Messiah that Bartimaeus sees the hope of God's grace and forgiveness. So Jesus opens his eyes and Bartimaeus teaches us how to see. I truly wonder what Bartimaeus saw going forward? Did he see the suffering and struggles of people more clearly? Did he notice those who were left out or left behind? Did he witness the strength of compassion in the face of despair. The Bartimaeus teaches us how to see. And this event happens right before Jesus turns his attention to go to Jerusalem to face the suffering that is to come. It is almost as if the Gospel of Mark wants our eyes fully open to see God's grace and forgiveness at work in the life of Jesus, both then and now. That if we're not sure whether this has any bearing on our lives now, the book of Hebrews says otherwise. For the first readers of Hebrews, they were accustomed to offering a sacrifice, consulting a priest in order to catch a glimpse of God's grace and forgiveness. But it says that Jesus, who proclaimed this grace and forgiveness, is risen, defying the shackles of death, that Jesus remains as an ultimate priest, as an advocate for all people, offering grace and forgiveness for everyone. That we are invited, like Bartimaeus, to, to witness this grace and forgiveness and then to participate in it. That we're just not recipients of grace. We become agents of it. It's what the church means when it says the priesthood of the believers. 
or as Carlisle Marnie put it, a priest at every elbow. That we have the opportunity to share this grace and forgiveness with others. The words of Bartimaeus have grown into this prayer used by the church, particularly the Orthodox Church. It's called the Jesus Prayer. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. It's a prayer that we can take with us wherever we go, that we can pray it each and every day, that we can whisper it to ourselves throughout the day, centering our lives around God's grace and forgiveness. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. That it fosters in us a posture of grace and forgiveness. Helping us see again and again more and more of the needs of others around us. And grace and forgiveness help us better understand God, to better understand our neighbor, to better understand ourselves. It's a gift we receive, a posture we take, a love we can share, and it opens our eyes to so much more. It is, as Barbara Brown Taylor writes, forgiveness is a starting place, not a stopping place. And that's what Bartimaeus says to us. Forgiveness is not the destination. It's just where we begin. It opens us up to the sheer possibilities of grace and forgiveness. But admittedly, forgiveness is hard. It is hard work and heavy lifting. And during those times where we struggle to forgive, it can feel like a stopping place. like we have failed. As Richard Lisher writes, we might assume that the whole practice of the gospel has let us down because we let it down. But Bartimaeus says this is not true. The book of Hebrews says this is not true, that we have this advocate that when we cry out to Jesus from the side of the road, despite the fact that others tell us to remain quiet, Jesus calls out to us and says, let them come to me. That we can return to the words of Jesus, to the life of Bartimaeus, reminding us that God's love is endless. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. It opens our eyes to the possibilities of grace and forgiveness, which will never pass us by. Amen.